time. T-I-M-E, time. You got 24 hours today. And I just have a question. What have you been doing with your time during the turmoil? Because it's all about time. Matter of fact, it's about time. And that's today's title. It's about time. Uh, there's four things I want to give you today. And I want to just use a little acronym with time. Today, I must eat. Exalt God. Today, I must eat exalt God. If you cannot do anything else, God says, listen, now you have time to spend with me. And before your feet even hit the floor, I think one of the first things you should do even before you get out of the bed is begin to thank God and say, God, thank you for Jesus. Two, Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, thank you for healing me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for holding me. Thank you for delivering me from hell. If you can't do anything else with your time, guess what? Today, I must exalt God. That's number one. I know this isn't deep. This is just some practical teaching on what you can do with your time while you're off in this season, this session. It's really a session because God is testing us during this moment, particularly for believers. Is God perfecting us or is God correcting us? So today, I must exalt God. But not only that, today I must, here it is, encourage someone. And before you can encourage someone else, I think you need to encourage yourself. With, with, whatever, you are, with whatever you have, sometimes you have to encourage yourself um, with the people God has you surrounded with, with the things God has surrounded you with, the place that God has you positioned in. Encourage yourself. David said, sometimes I had to encourage myself when no one else would encourage me. I had to encourage myself. And before you can properly encourage other people, you've got to be able to encourage yourself. Um, say, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will trust in the name of the Lord. I will make it. I will be confident that God is my covering, my shield, my buckler. Uh, Lucifer had a bad case of the I wills, but his I wills said, I will exalt my throne above God. I will ascend to the mountains in, in heaven. Um, you don't want I wills that will take you away from God's presence, but you want some I wills that will bring you into God's presence. And, and finally, brother, someone said this. Uh, he says, think on these things. Think on these things. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is true, Whatever is good, whatever is just, think on these things. And just not think on them, but meditate on them. Uh, memorize them. And if you can find any virtue in, in, in these things, if you can find any praise in, in any of these things, think, dwell, meditate on these things. Uh, CNN can drive you up the wall and CNN can cause you to S-I-N because it can instill fear instead of instilling faith and anything that we do that is not a faith God says it's sin so today I must exalt God today I must encourage myself and encourage others got a couple more for you today I must evangelize the Bible says that the harvest is plentiful the laborers are few one of the reasons that the laborers are few right now is because they don't have supplies and we realize that supplies are coming and we realize that people need ventilators and respirators and oxygen and, and, and masks, but we also need workers. And some of the workers, they, they and when we, God bless the workers, I can't imagine going on that front line like that they have so much courage in this crisis. But you have some who are hesitant and it's because they don't have the armor. And how can I really evangelize to someone spiritually if I'm not fully dressed? The Bible says put on the whole armor of God, put on the helmet of salvation, uh, take the breastplate of righteousness, take the shield of faith, take the sword of the spirit, have my loins buried with truth, have my feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. However, if I'm not fully armed, I really don't want to go out to battle because the same thing that I'm trying to kill, I might start catching if I'm not fully armored. Um, 
sometimes in ministry, you can go in ministry and you're trying to help other people, but because you're not fully armored, the same thing that you're trying to kill in someone else's life, you will start to catch if you're not fully dressed. I mean, you, you preach against lying, but because we are not fully dressed, we become liars and we, we preach against pride, but because we are not fully armored, we wind up catching what we're trying to kill. This is a time to evangelize, but we've got to know our word, we've got to walk in our word, and we've got to be fully armed so we can tell a dying world about a living Savior. Today I must exalt God. Today I must encourage myself and someone else. Today I must evangelize. How about this one? Today I must enjoy today. This is something that you can simply do with your time. I'm going to start enjoying my day. How can, the only way I can enjoy my day, the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. He says rejoice, that's an action, and then be glad, that's an attitude. I will rejoice and be glad in my day, in my circumstance, with whatever God has given me. Stop focusing on what you do not have and start enjoying what you do have. The only way, believer, that you will be able to enjoy today is when you realize that the joy of the Lord is your strength. God's joy lives inside of me, so I have an enjoy that makes me enjoy. I'm gonna say it again. I have an enjoy, I am, that makes me enjoy, E-N, the blessings of God, and the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow. I'm not talking about the joy that Jesus had before the cross. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord that Jesus has when he gets up from the grave. 72 hours later, Jesus is up from the grave. He has holes in his hands, holes in his side, holes in his feet, and he's not mad at anybody. It's only been 72 hours. He's just got beaten up. He's just got stabbed. He's got cut. He's got spit on. He's got murdered. And he's not looking for anyone. The disciples never show up to the cross. And he, he's not hit. No hit. No hit on Peter. Come on. There's no revenge. He is totally joyful. And that same joy is living inside of us. So I asked Jesus, I said, how could you have joy? after they have crucified you. It's only been three days. And he said, Kent, because the last thing I said when I was on the cross was, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. In other words, Jesus is saying this, regardless of what's in my hands, regardless of what's in my life, I am giving everything over to God. So God, I am putting everything into your hands. And God has big, strong hands Put your situation completely into the hands of the Lord. And when you put your situation in God's hands, you can have complete joy. And I know we've been doing this challenge. You know, he's got the whole world in his hands, but it's really in his hand. God doesn't need two hands to work out this situation. He only needs one hand and he has big hands and the Bible says that we are in the palm of his hand. It's just not his hand. We are in the palm. His hand is so big, he only needs one, and he doesn't even need his whole hand. He just needs his palm. Today I will exalt God. Today I will encourage someone. Today I will evangelize. Today I will enjoy today. And this last one, this is for those overachievers. This, this is for those who are into extra credit. Today I will excel, or today I must, T-I-M-E. Today I must excel. Today I must be excellent. Today I must evolve. Here's the, we have time now. Time to be creative, time to invent, Time to upload a, a new web page. Time to upload your resume, revamp your resume. Listen, you can choose to either roll over or reinvent yourself. Today is the time to uh, 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 start a new business. Come up with new creative ideas on how you're going to make it through this storm. You got time on your hands. Take advantage of the time. This is not the time to be a couch potato. This is time to be an innovator. It's about time that I start exalting God more often. It's about time to 
today I must encourage myself. I'm going to make it so I can encourage other people. It's about time. Today I must evangelize, tell someone about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Today I must enjoy what God has given me. Today I must accept. Well, I'm out of uh, moments, I'm out of minutes, but I'm not out of ministry. Just want to give you a little nugget. I want to give you uh, just some word of encouragement about time. So this is your boy, Pastor Ken Holmes. We will see you, Lord willing, on Sunday at 10 a.m. Lord willing, we will be Facebook Live. Maybe you missed our service. Maybe you didn't have a chance to give. Uh, the church still needs our members' tithes and offering, and you can mail them in to the church, 737 West Walnut Road, Bible, New Jersey, the Word of Worship Church. Or, of course, you can hit us at Word of Worship 7 on Cash App or find us on Giveify. Uh, again, we still need your contributions, your giving, uh, because the mortgage company still wants their mortgage. The light bills are still due. The gas bill is still due. And we thank you in advance for your continuous giving. Hey, this is Pastor Kent. On behalf of Pastor Kent, on First Lady and the Home Family and the Word of Worship Church, we love you so much. I miss you dearly. Can't wait to see you again. God loves you and so do I. God bless you.